Okay, now that we know the main parameters which characterize antennas, let's br briefly go through the main antenna types which you will most likely encounter specifically in the space sector. Now, we already mentioned the property of parabolas to focus geometric rays, but there are many ways to use a parabola to that end. In general, all aperture antennas use parabolas in order to focus, but depending on the amount of reflectors, the position of the feeder, its support and the focal length used, they are divided into four main types. The simplest one to think of is the simple parabolic reflector, which is usually called center feed reflector since the feeder is in the center of the paraboloid. This configuration is straightforward. You simply put a feeder or receiver in the focus and secure it with the so-called support struts, which are these long thin lines holding the central piece. The paraboloid does its work and reflects the light rays, but there is a downside of this type of configuration and this is the fact that you cover some of the area of the antenna with the support struts and they might additionally cause some unwanted diffraction for certain frequencies. Now, if we want to eliminate the effects from the support struts, we have to feed the antenna from the side and in this way not cover its useful surface area. This is achieved by taking a non-central part of the paraboloid so that the support can still be in the focus but this focus is no longer in the geometrical center of the piece from the paraboloid we have. So it is positioned sideways and we call these antennas off-fed paraboloid reflectors. These are very often used for TV broadcasting, so you have almost certainly see them on buildings around towns. The other two parabolic reflector types which we will mention are usually again central fed and they use two reflectors, so a main dish and a secondary reflector. And the role of the secondary one is to effectively change the focal distance. So, if you wanted an antenna with a large focal distance, the support struts will have to be very long since the focus is far away. The Casa Grayan antenna, however, uses the secondary convex reflector to focus the electromagnetic waves before they reach the focus of the parabola itself, as you can see on the left image, making the effective focus smaller and so the whole antenna more compact. The Gregorian reflector works in the opposite way. It uses a secondary concave reflector to capture the electromagnetic waves further from the focus. This configuration is useful if the focus is too close to the antenna and it would be more effective to have the feeder further from it. An interesting fact is that both configurations started out as telescopes. So, if you change the surfaces reflecting radio waves with mirrors, these configurations focus light and they are known as Cassegrain and Gregorian telescopes. Also, these two types of antennas can be used in off-fed configurations and the one on the slide is an example of such a Gregorian antenna. Now, aperture antennas use parabolas as we've seen, but not all directive antennas are aperture such. A very popular and highly directive, although harder to realize antenna type, are the so-called phased array antennas. The idea for such a wave is to have a variable phase around a grid of elements. So, you feed the signal to all elements, but depending on the phase which each element has, it is either emitting earlier or later than its neighbors, which shapes the beam. A simple example is shown on the slide where each consequent segment has a slightly earlier phase and so the wave is effectively steer to the left. By manipulating the face in 2D grids, one can steer the wave and shape the beam to make it highly directive. Such 2D face arrays, however, require much more complicated beam forming networks. They are used a lot for radars but are generally larger and more cumbersome. A very useful type of antenna is the patch antenna. It doesn't focus radio waves in the way that aperture antennas do but instead uses 
discontinuities in pitches which are essentially microstrip transmission lines. These discontinuities act as sources of electromagnetic waves and of course the size of these patches is related to the wavelength of emission or receiving. These are especially useful for small satellites and can provide directivity which would normally require a larger mass and volume if it were realized by a parabolic antenna. The last type of antenna which we are going to mention as it is also widely used in satellite communication and tracking is the helical antenna. This antenna can be used in two modes. In one of these modes, it emits circularly polarized radiation, which you can think of as a rising by the shape of the helix itself. The wavelength is comparable to the diameter of the helix. In its second mode, it acts more or less like a dipole antenna and the wavelength is related to the length of the antenna. In this mode, it emits linearly polarized light and has a similar radiation pattern to the dipole class antenna. Now that we have the basic antenna types and we know more or less how the emission works, it is time to learn something more about the signal forming processes and modulation, which is of course essential for communication.